All right. Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. Today, Dr. Irina Kay is training us on how to make more money in less time by focusing on the high end. Irina, I've got a couple of questions that will help us to get to know you uh, at a more personal level. First question is this. First question is this. How did you get to be a business coach since all your background is being a physician? How did that transition happen? Well, that could be a long story or in short, what happened was that I left Switzerland about 25 years ago to come here with four children and the fifth on the way. Um, So I was, in other words, trying to regroup myself, but I did not want to go back into the medical field, although I would have been able to practice here. What they were asked me to do is go back and to do internships with 90 hour work weeks and I did not want to have somebody else raise my children. So then I transitioned to being a full-time mom, which then turned into actually fulfilling a lifelong childhood dream of mine, becoming a karate black belt and then a karate instructor. So I was bringing my teaching into the karate. And from there, it went into the Eastern philosophies. And I was, you know, everybody always told me, you can teach so well, you can explain so well, why don't you coach people? Then I was got into the law of attraction coaching because of those Eastern philosophies and energy work and all of it. And that transition of being bringing an amalgam together into business coaching of doing mindset work on one hand and strategy on the other, because I'm also married to a high achieving CEO my husband used to um, be the CEO of a $600 million company, and I learned a lot from him about business. So mm. that's why I'm here. That's the short version of it. <laughs> great, great. It's hard to imagine you as a karate black belt, but there you go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Second question. Uh, do you think that your experience as a physician uh, makes your business coaching different from a more traditional business coach? I do believe that. Oh, I have some background noise. That's not for me. I don't know who that is. It's not me. Anyway, can you, <laughs> can you all still hear me? Maybe somebody is not muted, Roger. If you want to give me a call, I can just read the message. Our phone number here is 403. And I don't hear you anymore. Anyhow. Yeah, hang on. Just hang on. I'm going to, I'm going to mute all. Okay, back to you, Arena. All right, here we go. Okay, why a physician? Yes, the thing is this when I found out, you know, about mindset, I'm still a scientist at heart. So I was delving deeply into neuroscience and how the brain works and why mindset is not just woo woo, actually something real that is anchored in the brain. And so I was able to bring that together. In my experience as a physician, I have been coaching people basically my all adult life. And I have been coaching all kinds of people, you know, even with the patients, it's a little bit more like mentoring. So my coaching is a combination of coaching and mentoring. But I always wanted the people, the patients on board with what I suggested as treatments. So I always made sure I explained to them what we were doing, why we were doing it and what the next steps should be or could be and made sure they were on board with that. And I had so many diverse people in there. I mean, people from where I had to give them basically a fatal diagnosis to people who did not speak any of the languages I speak. And I speak, I'm pretty fluent in five and you know understand about three or four more, but I had to kind of try to explain to them what was going on and even to people who were deaf. So definitely that helped me as in coaching because I can adapt to people that I'm talking to. Mm. And there's the science part. Great, great, lovely. Yeah. Uh, Participants, would you type any questions you have into the chat 
and I'll pose them to Irina at certain points uh, during her talk. Uh, now you're going to be sent a link to the recording of this talk in a few hours, but uh, please take notes anyway, because the very act of taking notes is going to increase what you absorb by as much as 30%. Irina, are you ready to rock the stage? I'm ready. I'm uh, ready if, you are. If, you, if you could share your slides. I can, if I think, I'm not sure whether you have to stop sharing or whether I can just share. Oh, I didn't realize I was sharing, sorry. Okay, doke. Oh no, you were sharing. I, I was sharing. You were. But I'm not anymore. Does everybody see that beginning slide make more profit in less time by focusing on the high end? Can you tell me, Roger, if that's what you see? Uh, I don't see it. I don't see. You don't? Interesting. Uh, uh, you're not sharing, Arena. You're not sharing. We don't see it. You're not. I'm not sharing. Why am I not sharing? I do. I think I was sharing. Share screen. Let's try that again. Yep, you're sharing now. Oh, okay, now you can see it. I'm so sorry. Well, technology. <laughs> okay, so um, what we want to look at is like the way I'm doing my coaching as well, going over for the big, from the big picture down a little bit into the details and drilling down. So today I want to talk about making more profit in less time by focusing on the high end. Does that sound good with you? So what I'm trying to say is, let me see if this works. Yes. There are two ways basically to increase profit and don't hang me up on that because I'm not a bookkeeper nor an accountant. So this is a very kind of crude model of business. But like I mentioned about my husband, it works for us that way to think about the two ways to increase profit. And I'm not going into tax optimization or anything like that because that is just not my expertise at all. And then I will talk about the critical elements you need to reach your ideal clients. And the three C's of high ticket selling. So you heard about me, what Roger said, what we talked about, but um, other than that, I would like rather, instead of going into like a 20 minute preamble about my accomplishments and whatnots, I'd like to just go along and maybe put some examples in as we go along. And I want to ask you a question first about you. What are you in business for? And I know a lot of people, especially in the transformational state um, space will be able to answer that way. Well, I want to make people happier. I want to have them healthier. I want to help them grow personally or even to world peace and making the world a better place and everything. But one thing you've got to really admit to and not be embarrassed about is you should be in the business to make money. You need to make money. So the more money you make, the more people you can serve. Because you think about that. My husband was once on the stage and at Harvard as a guest speaker. And he was asked by one of those fresh faced students about, well, is it all about the money? And he said, absolutely, yes. I'm the CEO and it is my job as the CEO to make money and to be profitable and to have the business grow because there's so many people who are dependent on that. I have the employees who have to feed their families. I have investors that will help us grow. And if we're not, we will not have those. I'll have the shareholders that I'm responsible to. So remember, you are the CEO of your business. And as the CEO, it is your job to make money. Again, the more money you make, the more people you can serve. So do not be shy about at all. So um, the general overview that I'm sharing with you, like what I really learned from my husband a lot is that what the, at the end of the day will count is only to increase profits. You can have a lot of revenue, but if you have huge costs, you won't have any profits or not big profits. So the question now becomes, 
how do we increase profits? And like I said, I'm a bit, hold on, let me see, I can't see my, my own screen. Here we go. Um, I'm not going into tax optimization, everything else. So the, the crude model here is you either reduce costs or you increase your sales revenue. And I will touch on both of those a little bit. To reduce costs, now I'm coming, my husband's a man from manufacturing, it's like materials, labor, overhead, but also with increased efficiency. And believe me, even as a coach, you'll have all of those in your business. So let's look at those a little bit more closely. For materials, just think about it. You need maybe upgrade your computer. You need a printer, you need paper, you need a microphone, you need all the gadgets possibly. So think about where you could reduce costs in that. You don't need all of it. You don't need a huge studio around it. Like I have this little ring light from Amazon and I think that's good enough. What I don't want, to, want it to skimp on is a good microphone and I hope you hear me well. So I got the Blue Yeti microscope, microphone, microscope. See, I'm going back to my science things. And as in labor, labor costs, think about, for example, a VA or somebody on your team, what they're costing. And think about yourself. What is the salary you're thinking you should get and what your hour is worth? And then you might think about, you know what, maybe we should outsource instead of doing everything yourself. The same here is with increased efficiency, time management, prioritization, or outsourcing. And you see, I actually have a friend who has a seven-figure business just doing time management by telling people how to organize their desks. Can you imagine? And last thing we say about the overhead, you know, the overhead we think about, sometimes we don't even think about it, is, for example, an office, even if it's a home office like ours, there is a rent that you can take off from the taxes. Or then you have these tech tools like software, web hosting, video conferencing, all of those. And I noticed just when I went to the books by the end of the year that I was paying monthly for something I hadn't used for over a year because I simply forgot about it and didn't look closely enough. And then I got the wrap from my husband, obviously. So if you see in the um, parentheses C checklist, when you stay to the end of the webinar, I'm actually offering you a checklist about important business numbers where I'm listing some of these overheads. All right, so we talked about reducing the costs. Now let's talk about increasing sales revenue. There's sales revenue can be increased by having more products or you have more buyers or clients which means you could get more leads or a higher conversion in your funnels, or then you charge higher prices or fees per client or per product. Now, I want to talk about the more buyers and more clients to increase the market shares or maybe even can dominate the market. How do you get more prospects or leads? You can get them offline like you go to events, well, right now with COVID is not that easy, right? But speaking or booths at ex exhibitions, networking, all of that. Or then you can get them online, which is social media marketing is huge now, email marketing, JV support, organic or paid traffic. And then to get from the leads to the client, you have a higher conversion. You try to get the higher conversion to increase the profit. You can get the higher conversion on opt-in pages if you get the marketing emails or webinars or whatever dialed in, you increase your conversion or the sales pages. One of the most important things, however, is going to have a sales conversation that will drive and increase your profits tremendously. So let's look at higher prices or fees. For offers above $1,000 to $2,000, a sales conversation is usually required. Hence, I said this is one of the most important aspects. Because if I have a higher efficiency in sales conversations, you get the higher conversion. And because we're going higher ticket, you actually do make more money in less time. So increasing the profits, you can lower the cost or increase sales. Does that sound make sense? 
Roger will tell me if in the chat somebody says, hell no, I don't get it. All right. Now we can actually set lower the costs, increase the sales by having a more products. I'm not really going into the products because I think when you are starting out or even if you're established, the main form is not to go into more products and create and create and create, but you also need the more, buy more buyers and a higher conversion from leads because more products can scatter you and distract you from actually working in the marketing and sales and the higher prices. So ideally, in an ideal world, you'll have all three, right? You have more products, more buyers at higher prices. Like I said, I don't go into the products. But so let's, into, let's look into high-end buyers and premium prices because that gives you the most bang for the buck. The definition, what are high-end buyers? Well, for me, they're people who I love to work with, right? So you can define for you what high-end buyers are. I'm just giving you what I'm thinking is important. They have to be coachable and open-minded. There's nothing worse than a client that you have to always drag and drag and drag along. They're able and willing to invest and they see the value in your offer. They're also committed and reliable. And about high-end buyers, who are they? Where are they? And this is where you do your avatar work, right? Drill down on who is your high-end buyer, who is really you want to work with and where would they be found? That will drive your marketing strategy. And how can you attract them? Again, where do you find them? What is it, what's important for them to see that you are there? And then how can you enroll them? So now let's talk about premium prices. Like I said, typically that's over $2,000. And it's results driven and not based on competitors. So don't go out there and think, oh my gosh, I can't ch charge that much because other people don't. It's really what the client would be willing to pay for a result. And that's why it's congruent to the value of the offer. If the offer is like a very small little checklist, like you're getting for free today, then obviously you can't go, can't go charge $197 for it. But it should also be based on your skill set and the way you're delivering it. Are you delivering it as a do-it-yourself course? Are you delivering it with one-on-one -on -one coaching? That makes a difference, obviously, in pricing. And now we're coming to critical elements to create more profit with less effort and in less time. What is critical? One of them I found was, and I found out the hard way, that you really need to crunch your numbers. And we're going into all of those. The next is the magical marketing message. This is what I'm calling it. It's the thing, the message that connects you to your ideal client perfectly so they understand who you are about and what you want to say and why they, they understand that you get them. And lastly, it's about the savvy selling, right? Now let's look at those. We do the crunching numbers and I'm thinking you should start with the end in sight. Like what are your revenue goals for the year? And how many hours do you want to work in a week? And how many, how many clients do you need to serve at what rate to get to those revenue goals for the year? And here I will say, remember that working in the business, so working with clients cannot take more than about 30%, maybe 50% of your time because you do need the other time to work on the business by creating, when you create content or you're marketing or you're selling, that takes a lot of time as well. And you need to work on your growth, which may be a new skill set or anything to scale your business and grow your business. You cannot work more than like about 30 to 50% tops really with clients. So I'd like to um, say with the reverse engineering also, it depends on what conversion rates you can expect, what is industry standard, and that will drive how many prospects you actually need and the way you market to them. So I will give you an example here and I have to explain that. Now, I hope you can see when I'm moving my mouse over what numbers I'm talking about. Let's 
take the example of one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm talking about up here at a $2,000 a month or a 5K month or a 20K month, which a lot of people say, oh yeah, that's what I want, a 20K month, which would give you a revenue goal for the year of 240,000. Now let's say the 15 here means the hours of work with a client per week. Like we said, if it's 30%, you're now at a 45 hour work week because you need to drive marketing and sales. And even if you work at $50, uh, sorry, 50 uh, weeks per year, which is a lot, only two weeks of off time, you need 750 client hours per year to get to these 24,000 but your hourly rate is only $32, which I think is way too low for anybody. But I know that people go sometimes down to 50 bucks. Let's see, we're looking at $60,000. We now mid five figures, still doing the 50, 15 hours of work per week with clients, 50, work, 50 weeks per year. And now at least we're getting an hourly rate of $80, which you know people at minimum wage would think, wow, this is incredible. At the 240,000 level, let's just say, all right, F that, I only want to work 10 hours per week with clients. I only want to work 40 weeks out of the year. I need these uh, every like quarter, I have time for catch up and I'll go on vacation or everything. Uh, you would need now 400 client hours per year, but now your fee, your hourly rate is at $600, which is extremely high already. So the, in the next example, when we're going into the numbers, I'm giving this one here, the $90, like almost cracking the six figure mark, now working 40 weeks per year, but increasing 15 hours with the clients. That means basically three hours per day in a week. And you would need 600 clients at that point. And your hourly rate is $150. And I think that is very reasonable. So here we're going from that 600 client hours and I'm just making an assumption to get an easy math here that you work like 10 hours per client, whether this is a three month package or somebody is a six month package and others are less, it's just an average. Let's just assume this for the ease of the math here, which means at the 600 client hours, and 10 hours per client, you need 60 client hours per year, which means five new clients per month. So how do you get five new clients when we're looking at the industry standards for conversions and leads needed? And we're looking up here, the offer value, low ticket offer versus high ticket offer. All of them will need a campaign. And this campaign can be either email campaign or social media campaign or affiliates promotions or any kind of campaign you can think of is a usual conversion of two to 3%, which is not that high. And you'll see how it gets more dismal as we go along. So everybody needs that. Like if you do a webinar, a webinar at a $50 offer is kind of overkill. It's really not necessary because the conversion is not that high anyhow, and you don't want to spend so much time on a webinar and creating it and doing everything for a $50 offer. But at a $500 offer level, you probably need a webinar and obviously definitely for the higher end offers. And the strategy sessions, you definitely need when you go to a definitely at a, a $2,000 level, maybe even a $1,000 level, you need the strategy sessions. And I'm putting here the 20% conversion in, which is one out of five closing, not too shabby, but it can be, could be better. And now let's look what else you could do with the high ticket offer. You probably need to run an event. Maybe at the 2000, you need to run an event, not certain, but you might. So there's even more work in there too. The sales page obviously can be shorter for the $50 offer, but it nowadays has to be long even for a $500 offer, which you will see at the end. And now let's see what kind of needs, uh, leads you need for a $50 offer based on the 3% conversion of only the campaign. You need 166 leads per month, which kind of is, you think it's doable in any which way but it only gives you a revenue of $3,000 in the year, which is 
really lousy, right? That's not, you can't <laughs> leave your corporate job for that. At the $500 level, we probably need about a thousand leads per month and we get a revenue of $30,000. If our offer is $2,000 and that is kind of a medium sized ticket, like a signature course, not yet like a high ticket membership or something, you probably need about 5,000 lead per month to get to the, to the six figure. And if we want to double that, you need 10,000 leads per month, which sounds, oh my gosh, who can do this? Now, bear in mind, this is based on a 20% conversion on the strategy session. Look what Rina, happens. Rina, are you open to a couple of questions? Absolutely. Do you want me to backtrack? Uh, Ashok would like to know how you arrived at five new clients per month. Okay. And Brian wants to know when you say strategy session, that would be similar to a one-on-one -on -one free consultation with a bit of deeper dive? Question mark. Yes, exactly. Okay, so strategy session, whether you call it strategy session or sales call or discovery call, breakthrough session, that's the one-on-one. -on -one that you usually offer for free. Although I'm not 100% if I want to do this in the future to tell you the truth. I have done a lot of pro bono work and I've noticed that people get so much value out of my strategy sessions that one client actually offered to pay for it and she did. So I'm thinking about maybe a strategy session is usually free and I will offer this one here to all of you and everybody else who will see the recording but I'm thinking it may be, and we'll get into that later on a little deeper too, um, maybe a possibility of charging a nominal fee to have a commitment. But that's what a strategy session is. Yes, Ryan, you're absolutely right. It is the free one-on-one -on -one call usually. And now the 600 client hours and buy five clients per month is over here on the left what in red. I'm assuming from the page before, let me see here, let's go to that page. We're going, we're going about, we're looking at the $90,000 revenue with 600 client hours because we're working 15 hours per week on a client and 40 weeks. So 40 times 15 with the 600. And here on the left again in red, you see that's the 600 client hours. And I'm assuming that's just an assumption that I'm spending 10 hours with each client over the year, whether it's like I mentioned, somebody may be using 20 hours. If it's a longer package, some maybe use less. So that's why, and it's just for mathematical reasons that may be completely different for your business, but that's why I'm coming for 600 clients from 600 to 10 per client means 60 clients per year that you're serving. So five new clients per month. That's how I'm getting 60 divided by 12 to the five new clients. Does this answer the question? Yes, thank you. Thanks, Ashok. Uh, Sinclair wants to know how should a complimentary consultation be used and how long should it be? For what length should it be? I didn't hear the first, how should, how should it be used? Is how, that the how should you use a complimentary consultation and how long should the complimentary consultation take. Okay. How should you use it? So see, we see when we're looking at this in the campaign, when you go to a webinar, you usually at the end of the webinar for a higher ticket offer, because people don't usually come from the webinar. Oh yeah. I'm plunking down $5,000, $3,000, or even a thousand dollars. They say, okay, let's chat about that. What can I help you with? What can you, you know, how can I guide you to the decision of yes, investing or no, not investing. How long should it be? That really depends on who you're talking to. I think it should never be more than 60 minutes. Um, some people get away with a 30 minute call, but we'll talk about strategy sessions down the road quite a bit more where I would like to, you know, and that's why I'm sharing the next slide after this, where I'm thinking that is the way to go that you, for high ticket offers. You want to increase the conversion on your strategy session. No further you, questions? No further questions? There are no further questions. All righty. All right. Let's go. What happens if you have the 80% conversion on a strategy session? Let me quickly go back so you can compare again. We said to get to the $240,000 
revenue per year, you would need 10,000 leads, right? With a 20% conversion, one in five, which is a good standard. But let's say you can bump that up to 80% conversion on a strategy call. And I actually have a friend, she says she has almost, she has almost 100%. What happens now here on the high end is that you don't need that many more leads. See, if you're going through the webinar option only, we need a thousand leads per month, but now we're adding that strategy session that's high converting. You don't need that many more to bump your, your revenue significantly. Even here too, I added, you know, I'm from 120 to 240 is times two, but I think you probably need more leads because you have even with the high conversion, you have fewer that even get that far because we're talking about a really high ticket offer. Does that make sense? Anybody asking something or are we okay with this? Yeah, there are no questions. No new questions. All right. How are we in time? I didn't even check. All right. We're still good. All right. So let's recap for the increase in sales revenue really High converting strategy sessions to high ticket clients means the fastest path to cash, right? So we talked about why the crunching of numbers is crucial. Let's quickly um, touch on the magical marketing message to attract the high profit prospects. What is the high uh, marketing, uh, sorry, um, what I'm calling the magical marketing message you have to be ultra specific. I actually know of a guy, I don't know him personally, who is so ultra specific in his niche and in what he's offering. He off has a seven figure business offering men how to do handstands properly. The next is you have to be crystal clear who that offer is for. And it has to come out in your message how, you know, who the offer is actually for. You also have to be 100% clear what problems you're solving for them, that it is an urgent problem they needed to ha have solved yesterday. And you have to be sure that your solution is specific and measurable. No wishy-washy stuff. People will not go for that. So in the magical marketing message, what I also feel is important is that what is your unique spin? Why you and why not someone else? or also define why there is a good fit between the two of you, because you really, like we said before, you don't want to work with people who are not your ideal clients. That is just dragging you down and it will not be worth the time spent. So you also have to define how you are or who you are in your message. And then is how can you share this message? Can you share it with clarity and integrity and confidence? That is very important. It has to come out in your, in your marketing message that you can really share that message. Okay, so let's look at the critical elements, which is also the savvy of high ticket selling. We said the crunching of numbers, we talked about the marketing message and the savvy of high ticket selling to get that conversion on the strategy calls. The number one secret of high ticket selling on a strategy call, you know what that is? What do you think? And by the way, I'd like you to put everything you can into the chat because I can't see it now, but I would definitely read all of, all of your answers and everything. What we have found out, and that comes from none less than Tony Robbins, the number one secret is mindset. Your mindset on a strategy call is what breaks or makes the sale. And what's almost equally important is a framework. So you know what boxes to tick. Which brings me to the three C's of the success mindset in high ticket selling. One, you need confidence. You need to be 100% sure about what you're offering is actually helping. You need to be 100% sure of yourself and of your offer. You need to have confidence to ask for the money even. You also need curiosity, genuine, impassionate, not impassion, empathic <laughs> curiosity about why this person has this problem. It, you can never make light of that. Be curious, don't be prodding and annoying, but just be curious with an open mind and an open heart, which brings me to compassion, right? You have on this strategy call, you have another human being like you 
a person who may be struggling, has a family and everything, you need to have the compassion to want to serve them and help them on that strategy call, even in the, if in the end they'll say, no, it's not for me. And now we come into that framework of a successful strategy session. And I know there's plenty of them. And I had so many where I was like so annoyed because it was that cookie cutter framework that everybody did. And I had got zero value from it. So I created my own framework and it is the BLAM framework. Now you might may, may ask me what the BLAM is BLAM. <laughs> and I'm going through these five steps here. The B stands for benefactor, L for listener, A for analyst, the other A for arbiter and M for mentor. You know, I just coined that acronym because it helps me when I go through the sessions to really make sure I'm doing all of these steps. So let's recap quickly to cut costs is a way to increase your profits and to increase your sales in the fastest way is by selling high ticket to high end clients by using your marketing magical marketing message and increasing conversion of an enrollment session by applying the BLAM framework with a success mindset of confidence, curiosity, and compassion. And I get to that blame again a little bit here, but I would like to introduce a cutting edge course that addresses this. And I'm calling it the more yeses without breaking a sweat course, because it's where mindset meets strategy. Like we said, the framework is the strategy and the mindset that comes into it to make magic happen. More yeses without breaking a sweat sweat has these five steps in them. The benefactor, and like we come back to this now, the benefactor or the BLAM framework, all these Bs, the benefactor and so on, you'll see right now, are the personas you need to incorporate when you're on the sales call with somebody. So they understand that you are curious, you're confident, you're compassionate, and you're with them. So the benefactor, you start out who is somebody who serves without any expectations. You can come across as salesy and needy and desperate. Then we have the listener who is focused 100% on the client. Everything else, you don't do any double tasking, multitasking or whatever. You focus 100% of the client and their issues right then, right now, 100% focus. The analyst then is like, and that's where my medical expertise comes in, diagnosing the underlying issues. So maybe somebody comes to you with a superficial issue of, I want to lose weight. But now you're going to drill deeper. You start with the, like the 30,000 foot overview and drill deeper until the person is in front of the mirror. Like, oh, why do I want to lose the weight? Is it for health reasons? Is it for vanity reasons? Whatever it is. So you know and find out what the underlying issue is. Let's say in my medical practice, you know, somebody could come in with abdominal pain. You know, that can be a lot of different things and you have to really drill down and diagnose. That's what the analyst does. And then the arbiter is the person who decides whether there is a fit on both sides. Does it work for you to work with this person? Does it work for them to work with, with you? And the arbiter is the one who, because it decides on the fit, and yes, it's time we'll make the offer. We'll make the offer. And then comes the mentor. The mentor is guiding the client to a, to a decision. No matter what you want on that strategy call, you want to get a decision. Is it a yes or is it a no? You don't want a maybe. You don't want a let's talk about it later. Although there are some exceptions. But the mentor is the one who will also address objections in a gentle, non-salesy, non-sleazy, non-pushy way, not with false scarcity or false, false urgency or with guilt tripping, but gently guiding the client to a decision is the mentor's job. So what can happen when you do this? In our manufacturing business, we applied the BLAM work or framework since 2018. Uh, so I told you that my husband was a 
CEO of a $600 million company, and he now owns his own business. And we're in manufacturing modular buildings, modular buildings that are not for um, residential purposes, just commercial. And in those, I'm saying the BLAM framework, I'm working alongside him. I'm actually in there, the, the business coach. Um, we're looking at, if you see on here on 2015, this is the revenue in blue and the profit in yellow, and it's in million dollars. I know these like sounds, well, $12 million and rising, but this is manufacturing. Like, you know, the costs are much more, much, much higher than in say the coaching business where we have obviously a lot of labor and a lot of material costs. But what happened before we actually applied this framework was we're petering around the $2 million mark and the profits was maybe in the 200 to 300,000. And since 2018, as you can see, it went steadily up. We were able to increase, this is a 15% profit, this is a 20% profit. So we are able to increase the profit from 15 to 20% and increase the sales to here it uh, was over about, yeah, three something million. Then that 2020, that's not even right. It was more, it was like seven. Yeah, maybe that's a seven here at about 7 million. And right now, this is a projection of 2021. The projection is, I'm thinking we'll definitely hit 12 million because it's now, already we have an order intake for close to 3 million and it's only January. Now, how did we in manufacturing apply that BLAM network? It was the same thing as I'm seeing my husband because he is the one who's driving the high ticket sales on the phone, like every day with people where he is stepping through these processes, through the steps of being the benefactor, explaining everything to everybody, listening what they need, coming up with a solution, seeing if there's a good fit, and then making an offer. And obviously, because um, we are doing the same work as before, we set the avatar work, we're very niched down in the high ticket. I can't actually divulge this because it's classified. It's mostly for the Department of Defense here. But so he becomes the expert in the industry for this particular product. And he uses the exact framework to go and make the offers. And sometimes, you know, we don't get the offer. We don't get, we don't get the order because sometimes there's constraints from the government about not only the budget, but also about they have to go with the low cost bidder, which is ridiculous. But that's what happens. So that's what I'm saying. What can happen is that you dramatically increase your revenue and at the same time increase your profit using this framework. Is there anybody having a question right now? Yes. Uh, Sinclair asks, uh, what are some techniques to use in mentoring aspect if you can't see them in person? Can't observe nonverbal communication effectively on Zoom or on phone or through Zoom? Yes. Well, that is something that probably comes with experience. You hear their voice, right? You hear of many of those when I'm doing the work with clients in my business, not in the manufacturing. I'm hearing hesitations. I'm hearing choking up. And then I know I'm hitting a nerve, right? So if you can't see them, you have to listen to these nerve. Listen, that's why the listener is there, that these nonverbal cues very closely. And like I said, I have a lot of experience with that in my medical field too, where there's both, right? You see, you see what they look like, you see their eyes glaze over, or you see whatever they're doing, but also, and you see the body language, but if you can't see that, you really have to listen very closely. And you also have to listen very closely of what they're saying and how they're saying it. This is why I'm talking about the more yeses course a little bit more, if I may, is why when we do in the course, we're going into the mindset of the buyer as well and what their learning style is and what they need. Ryan asks, so BLAM seems like a great tool for increased conversion, but yeah. did you also do additional marketing to reach more customers? Always. Like I said, 30% of your time is spent on the BLAM, let's say, on the, on the, the 
talking to clients, but the other percent needs to be, you need 30 to 50% of your work, of your work in the business has to be on it, on doing marketing and sales. Absolutely. Yes. So in my, our manufacturing company, we have a guy who is a brilliant salesperson. He finds out, you know, he has the contacts, he talks to people and then funnels them depending on what they want. You know, we make masses and we manufacture modular buildings. Some of them are mezzanines. There's a steel structures. These are not classified or anything. So they don't even go into my husband's desk, but anything else that goes into blast and ballistic or into secure security and all that, that goes to him. Yeah. Meg asks, uh, is there an efficient, gentle, but straightforward way to get a yes or no at the end of a strategy session? There is, there is. There is, and that's what the mentor comes in. You know, that's what your experience comes in about your business. And that's where on the course, may I do this? Oh no, that's, I'm sorry, I'm too early. Ah, well, scratch that, that comes after. In the course, we will be talking about this. How can you guide this prospect to a decision in a gentle way and in a way that is unique to you? And it's not pushy, it's not salesy, it's not crappy, it doesn't feel icky. Absolutely, there is a way. Yes. No further questions. All right, good. All right, I'm almost at the end of my time. Perfect. So um, this is what I was saying to you. I have a special invitation. We can get in a complimentary clarity and momentum session. And there is the link. And I hope, Roger, that you can put that one in the chat. So if people want to talk more about the course that I'm shortly going to offer you, make a little offer for you especially, um, that you could even talk about this with me beforehand or just ch chat about anything else that, you, that I could serve you with because you've been such a great audience and staying with me. The link is now in the chat. Excellent. And also, like I said, thank you so much. I'm giving you the... Um, phone number, please just text it to me because I never know when I'm able to pick the phone up. Here's the phone number. And there's also my email, an email, you know, both of those. I forgot to give you the text, the, uh, the phone in the link, Roger, but you can read it or people can take a quick note. But the email you can put into the chat box. If you need to reach me in any which way, please, this is my contact info. And let me know if I can go on. Done. All right. So I also promised you, for the people who stay, that business numbers checklist. And it's a PDF download where I just listed a lot of things that came to mind that what I'm using like almost every week, every day in the business, what is kind of important to look at so you don't miss anything where you could cut costs. Uh, this one is in the also it's a bit.ly link, is that good? Done, yes. Done, all right. Now, for your eyes only, make more profit in less time by focusing on the high end. I will make you this offer because Roger twisted my arm a bit and I'm giving you a huge discount on that course. The more yeses enroll high-end clients without breaking a sweat course where we'll go through the blam net of framework, where we'll go through the mindset as well. So can I talk about this a little bit? Sure. Okay. Here we go. It's a six week online small group course. And when I'm saying small group, I mean really small group. I won't do more than 12 people in the course because I feel everybody deserves personalized attention. And that's why what's included, you see the BLAM framework. And when I say immersion calls, these would be weekly calls, Q and A's and role plays and feedback, question and answer, like I said, feedback, role plays, hot seats, everything. That's why it's an immersion because you'll be working on it and you'll be practicing. You'll get peer feedback, you get my feedback. I also offer included in this course, in these six weeks, two private sessions. One of them even before we start the course so I can get the bearings of where you are, how I can serve you best. And then one of them being a progress audit down the road, which I would say around week four to see how far did you come? Because what you want to do 
is you want to come away with your own script of how to conduct a strategy call and what to do when people say, yeah, but I need to talk to my husband or yeah, but I need to have more time to think. Uh, I don't know whether I can afford it, all these kind of things. And at the end, we do the five, there's the five steps that we said about the BLAM framework, the five weeks, the five weekly immersion calls. And at the end of it, you get an implementation workshop where we tie up loose ends, where you can come with anything that hasn't been finished, whether it's working on your marketing message, whether it's working on your numbers, on the script, anything, the script that's unique to you and is not making this strategy session a freaking cookie cutter one that I had so many of, you know. You'll get worksheets, you get templates and more. You also get bonuses, which is a pre-qualifier form that will, you will fill out based on your unique business and your questions that you would have and people ask as a pre-qualifier so you don't have to waste your time on strategy sessions with flakes, with people. You know, I've done my share of mistakes in that one and talked to people who actually then on the call said, oh, I actually forgot we even have this call. It's like, what the heck? You know, don't do that. So pre-qualify them. You would get a pre-qualifier form. I also offer a lead magnet audit because you are variously, invariably, you need a lead magnet to get people in, into your funnel. And I will look at this lead magnet audit based again on the marketing message. Is that covering it, right? I'm also giving you right away when you sign up a do-it-yourself course about goal setting where you see what's the best route to success, how you can get yourself into the mindset of that and what steps to take, what stuff to implement on the way. And I have a money set point quiz. It's kind of fun to find out where your money set point might be just mindset wise, right? So at the end, what I hope to be having to you do, and I know you will definitely get results from the courses, increase your conversion on a strategy session. You will know how to conduct your unique sales call that is unique to you. It's not cookie cutter and it's not crappy and salesy and pushy. And you will be expertly guiding your prospect through the conversation with the framework. And then you will confidently present your offer and ask for the money. Because if you all will feel weird about and uncomfortable about asking for the money, you won't be anymore. I can guarantee you that. I actually do have a money back guarantee. If you think really, I'm not getting, I'm not getting results from this. This doesn't, this is not what I wanted. This is really something else. All right. So the big reveal, right? The total value of all of this is $5,697. But today for you guys, I'm making it available for $697. And there is the link to sign up we have a special coupon code because normally I really, I'm thinking of selling this course for $14.97 at least. I've been told it's worth $2,000 and then maybe discounted to $9.97, but only you because Roger twisted my arm ever so gently. I'm making it available for $6.97 and you have the link to sign up. And when you get to the checkout, I mean, I'm not sure if the coupon code is automatically applied but otherwise you use that coupon code VBN2021. I know not very original, but that's what I came up with. <laughs> so what I also would like to tell you is this is not really for somebody who has, is just starting out in the business because when you just start out in the business, you don't really focus on the strategy sessions. You still have to get stuff in place and you don't want to, you know, just file this information away maybe for later, but you don't need what I have done, have magpie syndrome, that's what I call it, because I was tempted by every shiny object. And I was, you know, buying stuff left, right and center because I thought, well, down the road, I'll need it. Guess what happens? You completely forget that you even have it. So this is not for you if you just incorporate and think I want to transition to coaching or something but I don't know who to talk to yet. This is for somebody who's really a little bit more established. And that's the clients I work with who are more established in their business. I'm not saying they have to have a huge business, but they already know who they're talking to and what their offer could be. Maybe it just needs to be tweaked. You know, we may, maybe you need to tweak the message, the marketing message. 
and so on. All right, I think that was it for me from my side. Irina, thank you very, very much for sharing this decades of wisdom packaged into 60 minutes. <laughs> what I particularly very liked welcome. was in, in the process of describing uh, the numbers, I particularly like your, your, your throwing a spotlight on those metrics that make for a successful coaching business. Yeah. I haven't seen that done before, and I'm certain everyone on the call uh, will be able to take those metrics and massage them uh, to see what their own outcomes and their own marketing should be in order to achieve the goals they have set for themselves. So on behalf of us all, I thank you very, very much. You're very, very welcome, everybody.